you know, all the things that we do to try to, to build a new city, to build a new Gloversville, of all of those things, the most important thing that we can do to improve the quality of life, to improve the city, to improve the attractiveness of the city, is to develop our neighborhoods, to improve the quality of our residential neighborhoods. Because think about it, you know, we can develop downtown, we can get new businesses in, we can try to improve parks and our recreational facilities and, and new options for people. But the most important thing are the residential neighborhoods because the vast majority of our people live in those neighborhoods. And where you live affects the quality of your life more than anything else. So the city, over the past few years, has taken a, a much more proactive approach to acquiring substandard properties because it's the substandard properties in neighborhoods. It's the abandoned structures or the derelict buildings that detract from the quality of those neighborhoods. And so we're taking over the title to some of the old industrial sites that have been abandoned, but we're also taking control of the houses, the residential structures, the two family houses, even the one family houses that are in such poor shape that they've been abandoned. So we're taking title to these properties in a couple of different ways. One is uh, under the general municipal law, 19A, we can uh, take title to a property by starting a procedure, a proceeding in the court, but only if the property is abandoned and if it's at least one year delinquent in taxes. The other way is through tax foreclosure. The county is our tax foreclosure agent. But in 2021, we acquired uh, several pieces of property from the county by purchasing it to, from, from the county, paying the county in full for the back taxes that they're owed and taking title to that property rather than letting it go to the, the auction. And then it, those properties, once we acquire those properties, go to our property disposition committee, which is made up of about five people, uh, some of our uh, department heads and a couple of members of the council are on that committee and they offer those properties for sale and you have to apply to, to acquire it. But the thing is that they're not sold just to the highest bidder uh, and, and they're not talking about just rec uh, recouping money for the city. They want to convey it to the person who's going to do the best thing for that property uh, for, for the community for the neighborhood. And um, so, that, you know, in the application, uh, the applicant has to put down what they want to do with the property. And then they get about 18 months time to bring those properties up to code. And we're hoping, you know, our highest priority is to have those properties go to someone who's going to live there. So it's an owner-occupied property. The other thing that we do is we're doing two family inspections now and I know that's not uh, really popular with a lot of the landlords who own two family houses but it's really necessary. The fire department goes in and for the first time uh, those properties uh, do a biannual inspection. So every two years they have to get a certificate of occupancy as a result of an inspection and it's not just a fire code inspection. It's a livability inspection. So uh, we try to get these properties up to code. We also have a vacancy ordinance so that a property that's vacant and left vacant, for example, if a mortgagee bank takes title to a property and then leaves it vacant for a long time, we have vacancy fees that go into effect. That gives an owner of a vacant property an incentive to do something with that property, either to convey it to someone who's gonna do something with the property or to upgrade the property and get it occupied. And then the other thing is enforcement, the blight enforcement. And I know that this is not popular with a lot of people. These are the administrative citations that are being, uh, being given out. But it's absolutely necessary because when someone keeps their property in bad condition, it's, it's, the, it's the, the sightliness of these properties that are important. Um, you know, having trash and debris outside, having a junk car there, 
you know, not cleaning up, broken windows, the, the appearance, not mowing your lawn, uh, not trimming, you know, shrubbery or whatever. Um, these things, uh, you, can, you can get a $30 citation. And, you know, th this hasn't been uh, really enforced as much as I would like it to be enforced because we only have one part-time neighborhood quality administrator that issues these tickets. Uh, and he's only part-time, so he can't get to everybody. But my goal is to enforce that uniformly and consistently throughout the city so that any violation is ticketed. And, you know, a lot of people are upset about this because, uh, you know, the NQA is out there. But it's so necessary because an owner that keeps a property in bad condition is actually taking value from the other people who are investing in that neighborhood, the other people who are doing the right thing, and other people living in the neighborhood. It detracts from the quality of life in the neighborhood, but it also detracts from the value of everyone's home. So what we want to make, we want to make Gloversville a place where people are comfortable investing, comfortable investing in their homes, uh, where people feel confident that if they upgrade their houses, their neighbors will be held to at least minimum standards of decency. So this is really important. Um, and so with all of these initiatives working together, we hope over the next few years to dramatically improve the quality of the residential neighborhoods. So hopefully um, this, along with the other things that we're doing in terms of economic development, uh, will give Gloversville a new birth. Thank you. Thank you.